Hello everybody, it's me, Ghost Critic. Finally found the time to get in front of a uh, camera this weekend and uh, I now have the chance to let you know what I thought about the books that I picked up this week. Um, I did have seven books but I'm really only going to talk about five this week. Um, the other two, East of West, which was um, a kind of end of year annual type thing which was more kind of reading matter and history about the back about the background of east of west um, i haven't had a chance to read all the way through that so i can't really and it's not really one of those books that you can kind of review or have an opinion about really um, also lazarus number 13 i haven't read this because i still have to read the two issues that came before this um, so those are two books I'm not going to talk about. I'm sure they're going to be great and I'm sure there's somebody out there talking about them anyway. However, I have five more books to read and I'm going to kick off this week with Batman Eternal and it's issue 36 which is essentially a wrap up of the Bard storyline. Um, much like with the Hush storyline, this kind of gets wrapped up very quickly, very neatly, and it just kind of reeks of this is the kind of the end part of one of the collected works that we will put out eventually for this um, event. Um, the trade paperback will end with this storyline. Um, so it just felt a little bit too quick, a bit too rushed, uh, much like the end of the Hush story did. Um, so, in essence, we've got we've got Vicky Vale finally finding out the truth about Bard and his life while he lived in Detroit. Why he has ended up the way he is. Why he is doing what he's doing. Uh, but in the end, doing nothing with that. There's a story there. She decides not to use. Uh, Batman with um, the whole family in tow um, confront Bard and basically do nothing apart from give him a few stern words. Um, there is this feeling that you know Batman is offering Bard the chance of redemption here to do the right thing but it just feels a little bit come on Batman Bard's just tried to kill you. Um, you're not just going to let him run off, still be commissioner uh, and could potentially do um, a lot more damage down the way. Now, there were some confusing elements, at least to me, within this issue. Not least of all, kind of Bullock and the GCPD's 180 degree turn on um, Bard himself. Um, they've been backing him all the way to bring down the Batman. We've seen Bullock in issues of Detective Comic try and shoot Batman dead. Um, what Bard is doing should not shock or offend Bullock in any way. And yet he suddenly has this streak of, conscious of consciousness um, where he's like, mm, actually I think you're going a little bit far here. Uh, this isn't the way we do things. Well, don't point guns at back people's heads in other issues then. Uh, the other thing that was a, a tad bit confusing, and maybe I've just forgotten or didn't pick up on this, but it was the whole the whole Giuseppe Machina thing with um, Julia Pennyworth and the Blue Rose code word. Um, that just came out of nowhere. Um, at least to this reader. Um, he, what do I say? It was just very convenient timing for Batman. Of course, we then get to the end page. Um, I think given it's Saturday now, a lot of people have already read their comics, so I'm going to spoil the ending here. But, and we do have to wonder, given Snyder, um, Ponchon for throwing in red herrings. Is this our master puppeteer finally revealed? Is it finally the Riddler? He makes a show at the end. He does appear to be that way. Uh, he He's there purporting that Batman should have realised what is going on by now. I just don't know whether the Riddler has those kind of connections or that kind of push or... 
to, to get those people that he's got to kind of work to, not necessarily together, but to all come en masse just on his bidding. Um, so that kind of irked me a little bit and I just thought, what, the Riddler again? Okay, we've seen his story in zero year, this is his story now, but they just really, Snyder really seems to want to make Riddler this very um, pivotal character within Batman's life. I didn't dislike it, it just felt a bit rushed, a bit convenient, the artwork was fine, it was another, I'd say above average issue of Batman Eternal. With four issue number three, we get a nice mix of both plot lines and action. So what we have within these pages are the kind of the meeting of the Frost Giants and Malaketh uh, and how those two have decided to work together. We've got Dario Aga, the CEO of Roxxon, reveal his... I don't know if it's his true identity or his true nature. I don't really know very much about that character, but it was exciting nonetheless. Um, they are teasing us with the reveal of who our female Thor is. Uh, in the last issue, we had our female Thor um, separated from Molnir, the hammer, and when you're not attached to it, um, you become the person that you are actually are. Um, the garb of the Thor is dissipated and you just become whoever, whoever is underneath it. Um, but obviously at the last second, just as she's about to have to uh, kind of helmet and her costume disintegrate, um, she grabs the hammer back and, and she's there. Thor, lots of action, um, lots of exciting fight scenes. The artwork can sometimes be a little bit too chaotic and confusing. I kind of had to strain my eyes at times to kind of get where everyone was and what they were actually doing. But it is very kind of colourful, it's kinetic, it's dynamic, uh, which makes this a fun book to read. And then Male Thor turns up. Astro City 18 this week was very interesting in the sense that I had the feeling, and I don't read solicitations, I don't know how many issues there are within a certain series or if anything's coming to an end, but just by reading this issue, you kind of get the feeling that Kurt Busiak is coming to the end of this particular run of Astro City. Uh, we begin with the retirement party of one of the um, the superheroes of Astro City, Black Rapier. Um, but the focus of this book is on uh, two middle aged coming to the, the end of their middle ages, um, of uh, Crackerjack and Quarrel. They're a couple um, and they're not as young as they used to be. Uh, and we see them having um, a bit of a showdown with, I think it was the chess gang, where Crackjack is, is wounded because, you know, he's getting old, he's not fast on his feet as he used to be. And there is this kind of sense of, of endings, of, of lives, deciding what to do next. And we have Quarrel and um, Crackerjack talking about all these kind of young upstarts that are biting at their capes, who um, have no sense of tradition, there's no logic to why they um, become who they come. They're, and there's a, there's a certain kind of feeling about legacy characters in here as well. Um, and we get the story of how Quarrel became who she was. And it's a very good story. I hope Astro City isn't finishing anytime soon. I've loved this series. Kurt Music tells the most amazing, immersive and interesting stories. And I would love this to keep going on and on. Uh, the second part of this, where we learn more of Quarrel's past, really looking forward to that. Um, go pick out Astro City. Pick up a, a trade or two of this. Um, to get a feel for it and then jump on board. 
We have Shutter, issue number seven. Had a couple of months off, but wow, did it come back with a bang. Uh, let's pick up on the kind of the subplots that are happening in Shutter at the moment, because we only really see like little glimpses of them. Uh, we drop in back at Kate's um, flat that when we last saw it, had just had a huge bomb thrown into it. We have her boss wondering where she is, wanting her to do some more photographic work. Um, and then there's her, I presume it's her agent kind of um, standing up for her and saying, I'm sure she'll be around soon. We drop in with the, um, the, the lion, the head of the gang of lions, um, after just kind of taking down the uh, tricep, Triceratops, still bleeding away in a motel car plot, um, but it was it was fun. There was some some good um, artwork in there, interesting um, developments within there. On the whole, this is about Kate and her younger brother. They go and face a a huge uh, monster of kind of dragon proportions sent by evil sister that we can see on the front here. And there is some gorgeous artwork by Leila de Dulca. And it just shows her wonderful imagination and her, her creativity in this kind of fantastic world that her and Keatinge has um, put down on this paper. Um, and then of course that last panel happens and I don't know anyone who could have realised that that was how this comic was going to end. And that's what I love about Shutter is that no matter how, you know, I've complained a little bit about how chaotic and how many, how too many ideas were thrown into the mix right at the beginning. But when you do turn over each page, you don't know what you're going to get. But it is always exciting, it's always fun, and it's always entertaining. Um, go dig out some back issues of Shutter. Well, I would have thought there is, or at least coming up soon, a trade collecting at least the first six issues. It's, it's a sleeper hit. I don't hear many people talking about Shutter, but many more should be. Okay, so we come to our final issue, and one on which I approach with much trepidation, um, and that is, of course, Bitch Planet, issue one. Now, I actually waited for this comic for months. When I heard the solicits for this, I was just there, I was like, I need to buy this comic. This is something I am going to thoroughly enjoy. It came across as this kind of sci-fi ex exploitation movie that kind of based on the kind of 70s women behind bar genre. Um, and it does do that. It is that comic. Uh, it revels in it, in fact. I mean, the cover itself... Um, and it's kind of movie poster-esque 70s uh, kind of display, you know, the slogans, are you woman enough to survive? Girl gangs, caged and enraged. It revels in this, and I'm glad there is that certain element to it. Then before I'd even got round to reading this, I was seeing headlines with the F word banded around. We'll get to that a little bit later. Basically, we are in future world territory where um, men are in control of everything and women are expected to be compliant to all their needs. Um, any woman that isn't is carted off to what is um, commonly known as Bitch Planet, but is actually a kind of... It's, it's, a, it's a compound in space. It's a prison in space, basically. Um, and at the beginning of this, we follow a group of women who are um, coming in for the first time to this prison complex. And already we kind of 
get introduced to the kind of degrading nature uh, of their of their induction into the prison system uh, and their their realization that you know they have absolutely no rights in this place whatsoever it is a case of you tell me to jump all i say is how high um we get a car like I said, I'm very apprehensive about reading this because I know the the concept of the book and where this book has kind of gone to now uh, within the comic sphere and the internet, that it is a hot topic about women in comics. Um, but even here, you kind of get the, the female stereotypes and I'm sure the writer and the artist would say they are using them to make a point but they are nonetheless stereotypes. We have the big fat black woman, we have the big strong woman, we have the innocent white woman. And I'm not just um, pointing the finger at the women either. The men come across just as um, stereotypical as, as the women that are portrayed in here. So we have um, a guy who cheats on her, on a guy who cheats on his wife, but it's his wife that has to suffer for this. Um, but it's this kind of black and white storytelling device which kind of annoys me because nothing is ever black and white. All men are not bad. All women are not subservient. Um, neither is the case and all of it is the case if you kind of understand what I mean. Um, and I'm sure it's kind of a very thin line that writers and creators, whether male or female, have to kind of traverse when they deal with topics like this. Now, on its own, this is purely, as I said, a sci-fi exploitation film. That's basically what it is, but it's on paper. It's not until we get to the back of this book and we have um, an article written by, I forget her name, Danielle Henderson. <coughs> um, and that's where the F word jumps in. Yes, it's the, it's the word on everyone's lips at the moment, especially within this, in our kind of pop geek culture at the moment, and that is feminism. And everywhere I looked, you know, everyone was praising Bitch Planet, saying it was a great comic, and it is a good comic. I enjoyed reading this. It was a fun sci-fi future world story. But then they kept adding the feminism adjective or noun, whichever it is, on the end of it. <clears throat> and it isn't really that. Maybe it will become that eventually. The only feminist issues there are in this book is the article at the end. And while I've read it, I've digested it, I've read it a hundred times before, and I agree completely with what is being said in there, I think it's in the wrong place. Now, this book, I'm guessing, is or is trying to predominantly appeal to women and women who are already reading comics in um, at the moment I would say are and I don't mean this in a uh, negative way but they are not of the norm they <clears throat> they probably are on the kind of outskirts the, the kind of geek culture of comicdom and there is few of them. I understand that. So it's great to have a book like this um, on the shelves for them to read. And again, I think the article behind here, they will have understood. Again, they will have uh, digested. But again, they will have read a hundred times before. You're preaching to the choir here. Everyone agrees with it. The, the article would have been better placed next to a pinup of Nicki Minaj or maybe a review of Ariana Grande's latest album because the people who enjoy that part of pop culture the Nicki Minaj, the Jessie J's, the Ariana Grande's, the Britney Spears, the Miley Cyrus's 
Those are the women that, and the young females of today that you need to target with the message that you are putting in the back of this book. These are the ones that <clears throat> you need to tell that you don't have to push your behind right up to a TV screen to get attention. You don't have to wear the skimpiest of outfits um, <clears throat> to appeal to men or Oh, it's hard to tell you how I'm feeling about this without sounding stupid, basically. Um, at the end of the day, I just think it was pointless having this article at the back of this comic book. And that was the only... If that hadn't been in the back, the feminism word would never have even been used in relation to this book. Because, in a way, this book has already come out in the storylines that are doing many, many times before and it's never had that word attached to it. In fact, it's always had the word exploitation attached to it. So I don't know. Again, I love the book. It was really good. I had a great entertaining time reading it. I'm looking forward to seeing where um, all these creators go with it. I just don't need the... I hate to say it, but the agenda that's behind it. Okay, and that's it for another week. Um, next week, it's as you can see, my time um, bringing videos out has been a little bit messy. Uh, it is coming up to the Christmas, very busy time, so I can just only say expect them when you expect them. Um, there will definitely be the comic book Christmas countdown going through all next week and the lead up to Christmas Day. Those videos have already been prepared. Monday there will be our final question of the week for 2014. So look forward to that and I'm going to look forward to your responses to my final question. And um, yes, I should be able to pick up my comics on Wednesday, so I'll have a video then. It's just the reviewing of next week's that may be a little bit behind, if at all. But I'll do my best. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you next week. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new here. Give this video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments section what you thought of my views this week. Until next time, bye-bye.